Two months ago, the developers of Rise of Kingdoms sent out a small player survey asking if players would be interested in the implementation of a new tier six unit or a new era to Rise of Kingdoms. I covered that survey already on the channel, but this past weekend at the Los Angeles player meetup, the developers revealed that for almost a year now, they've been strongly considering adding a new tier or type of unit to Rise of Kingdoms. And so today I'm going to share with you guys exactly how I understand what the developers are considering for Rise of kingdoms this is like my third time filming this video because i want to be as accurate as possible i don't want to spread any misinformation in the community and it's important to know that nothing that we talk about in this video is finalized these are things that the developers are really considering doing for the game but are still ironing out details and they may or may not happen and also i want to give a huge shout out first to chiskel gaming of course a lot of the information that i'm going to talk about here in this video was covered in his video where he discusses a lot of the changes that the devs talked about coming to rise of kingdoms i'm gonna link his video down below he covered a lot more than just a new tier of unit which i will also discuss in a following video this video will just start with tier six units and i also want to give another shout out to a smaller rise of kingdoms youtuber who goes by the name of frog boy who actually shared footage of this event which really helped me understand what the developers were really trying to get at because tier six units while they may be coming to rise of kingdoms it is not what you think and i want to try to clear up any sort of misinformation and i want to share with you guys what i think they mean and how i feel about this but first what's going on guys cheers now really quick if you appreciate me covering breaking news topics in rise of kingdoms please drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton and like i said before i wouldn't be able to make this video if it weren't for chiskel and frog boy so please show your support to their channels down below okay the first thing we have to talk about here is what the developers actually said about quote unquote tier six units okay and the reason that i'm putting tier six units in quotes is because it seems to be the case that the developers do not have plans to implement tier six units in the way that you and i might think about tier six units the way that the developers described adding a new type or tier of unit to the game and also the way that it was described by Chiskel in his video suggests that the developers are considering adding a new era to rise of kingdoms entirely and that new era could be something along the lines of a gunpowder or renaissance type of era which would imply the introduction of muskets or flintlock pistols maybe more types of cannons and the idea seems to be that with this new era would come a new type or tier of unit that would expand the gameplay in rise of kingdoms and potentially add an actual ranged unit that maybe doesn't require the setting up and taking down of an arrow tower like we already see with ranged units in the game it sounds to me like when the developers discuss a new era for rise of kingdoms they're talking about what we see here in the city hall okay right now the entire game once you hit level 21 city hall you are entering into the feudal age and that's kind of where the game ends right if you look at all of the commanders in the game if you look at all of the technology that is featured in the types of units and things like that everything in the game sort of falls within that feudal era and it sounds to me like the developers are considering adding a new age that goes beyond the feudal age and that's what would bring about the sort of technological advancements that would give us a new type of units okay and just to be very clear the way that i've understood how they've laid this out it sounds like we would not be getting a tier six infantry a tier six archer a tier six cavalry etc so in this video if i use the term tier six just understand that it does not apply to the currently existing units in the game it sounds like the developers aren't really considering adding a quote unquote actual tier six to rise of kingdoms but they're considering adding a tier of units that comes after tier five chronologically right like in history in time and i know that's confusing because what comes after five six right so like if i say tier six in this video just understand that it's not actually what you're thinking about now i want to show you exactly what i think the developers mean by a new tier of units because i do think that they've already been sort of experimenting with this in call 
Hall of Dragons. If you guys didn't know, the developers of Rise of Kingdoms have a sort of sister studio that works on a game called Call of Dragons that came out last year. I covered it here on the channel pretty extensively for the first few months before I ended up quitting the game. But if we come into the research center here in Call of Dragons, a lot of this is going to be very familiar. We have swordsmen, we have knights, we have ballistas, and we have vestals. Just like in Rise of Kingdoms, there are four unit types. However, once you reach tier four and beyond, you unlock a fifth type of unit. So we still have infantry, cavalry, archers, and mages. Of course, the difference there is that in Rise of Kingdoms, we have siege instead of mages, but you can see here a fifth type of unit called celestials. Now, this actual unit will vary because you have three different factions that you can choose from. League of Order has the Celestials as their unique unit, but Wilderberg has the Wyvern Riders and Spring Wardens have Forest Eagles. And all three of these special units are flying and that's what makes them special. And so when I'm listening to what the developers for Rise of Kingdoms are describing when it comes to quote unquote tier six units, I think about Call of Dragons. Okay, we've got tier five units here and then we've got a new type of unit that comes after tier five. So in rise of kingdoms, imagine after these tier five units, you've got a new type of unit that comes afterwards that is unlocked with the addition of a new era. And instead of it being celestials or dragon riders or something magical like that, it would be what actually comes next historically and chronologically. So after these units were introduced in history, you would get musketeers or something like that. And I think this idea is interesting and I'm going to give you guys my full thoughts and opinions on this. But what if this final unit type was specific to the actual civilization that you had in rise of kingdoms, like a new unit type for every civilization in the game that actually makes it feel like you're part of that civilization. I think that could be cool, but there's one other caveat to the introduction of this new tier of units units and that is that the developers have said that they're considering the idea of unlocking tier five units automatically for new players when they reach their fourth KVK in Rise of Kingdoms. And this is really important, right? Because if you're going to add a new tier of unit, then it's important for new players to be able to catch up to the end game players that are, have been playing Rise of Kingdoms for almost six years now at the time of recording this video. Now, I don't want to spread any misinformation here. So so let me be very clear. I've shown you guys an example from Call of Dragons, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the developers are planning. Okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get an extension of the military technology that's already in Rise of Kingdoms. Okay. They could be implementing this in a whole different way. Maybe it comes with a new building in the game, right? Like you have to build a new training building when you reach this new era and that's how you unlock them. Like I have no idea what they're actually considering, but what I do want to be very clear about is that it seems like they're more so in the planning phase of how do we implement this rather than if or when okay it seems like they are strongly considering adding this new tier or type or, or era of units into the game and so your feedback to the developers about this is going to be very very crucial and we're going to talk about that in just a second but when i think about the introduction of a new era to the game with a new possible style of gameplay i think about their most recent kvk release which was i think it's called shifting sands they just actually did a sort of exhibition match between a bunch of different content creators unfortunately my best friend got engaged that weekend so i was away and couldn't participate in that event but basically in this new kvk there's a new unit called shifters and you can do a lot of things with these shifters but one of the things that you can do is turn them into a ranged unit that doesn't have a setup or takedown time you just walk around and you can just hit things at ranged okay now it seems to me like these units maybe don't hit as powerful as the current implementation of ranged in the game right now like with Cordoba and things like that you're seeing crazy reports but the trade-off is that they can move around freely right and so there's like a give and take there they're not as strong but they're more flexible they're more mobile things like that okay so it could be the case that this shifting sands kvk is sort of like lilith testing the waters for what this new type of unit might be able to do on the battlefield and i think that that strategy and implementation is very good we'll talk about that in just a little bit but now that i've described to you guys what i understand quote unquote tier six units to be as explained by the developers and as explained by chiskel in his video and now that i've shown you guys call of dragons and sort of what i think the developers are getting at here 
for rise of kingdoms let me share with you guys the results from a poll that i did on my youtube channel yesterday 15 hours ago i posted this poll and it got 3200 votes and i asked a very simple question without providing any context at all i said what do you think about adding tier six units to rise of kingdoms and the response to this question was overwhelmingly negative we have 77 percent of players disagreeing or strongly disagreeing with the implementation of tier six units now again Again, most players when they saw this probably thought of tier six infantry tier six cavalry tier six archers which probably isn't what the developers are considering adding but even though this is a small sample size of 3,000 players it seems like overwhelmingly the player base doesn't necessarily want a new tier of unit they don't seem interested in the implementation or the idea of a unit that comes after tier Five. Okay, now let me give you guys my thoughts and opinions on everything that we've talked about in this video. If we assume that the new tier or type of unit that comes into the game is going to come with a new era in the game and will come with new technology in the form of gunpowder muskets flintlock pistols etc i personally am not really interested in that implementation as somebody who started playing the game in october of 2018 that is like one or two months after the game first launched i think that there was a beta as well i personally love the era that rise of kingdoms is in right now i like the feudal age i like that it's a little bit more gritty and i like the fact that we don't have more modern types of technology like pistols and guns and things like that now i know that we've already introduced like if you look at Mehmed for example and I showed him before but his active skill literally has cannons right and same thing with Cordoba we already kind of have cannons in the game which is canon no pun intended there but that means that there's already gunpowder in the lore of rise of kingdoms okay but I don't necessarily want to see the developers take it a step further and make that gunpowder a portable weapon like an, a rifle or something like that I don't feel like that fits with rise of kingdoms and again I I enjoy the era that we are already in now when it comes to adding new gameplay elements right like adding that ranged unit that doesn't require a tower to set up or take down I still don't want that in rise of kingdoms and this is coming from somebody who's played call of dragons right and I think that this is something that the developers of rise of kingdoms have done before they will test something in in call of dragons and then if it works out really well there they iron out all the the kinks and then they might implement it into rise of kingdoms right so for example they had ranged units in call of dragons first and then they implemented it into rise of kingdoms and the games do they do this where they kind of take the best of both worlds and they share you know features and events that work in one game they put it in the other and when it comes to the gameplay fighting style of rise of kingdoms i prefer the melee combat in rise of kingdoms than the combat in call of dragons and i know that you know if you've played call of dragons that might be controversial i think a lot of call of dragons against players that have played both games will tell you that the Call of Dragons gameplay and fighting style is it's slightly more complex it's a little bit more advanced you know there's like medium range and long range units there's flying units and terrain and things like that and so it's a little bit more involved than what's in Rise of Kingdoms and I think that that is great and I think that having that option for players to choose Call of Dragons over Rise of Kingdoms is important but for me the gameplay in Rise of Kingdoms the fundamental core gameplay of open field movement and melee combat is what I want to do that's what I like about Rise of Kingdoms I like the current style of open field fighting where you click you drag you attack an enemy and they have a skirmish in the battlefield I am not interested in more ranged combat I am not interested in mobile ranged combat I am not interested in terrain based combat I'm not interested in any combat similar to Call of Dragons one of the reasons that I stopped playing Call of Dragons is because I just didn't really like the combat and I know that you know again players of Call of Dragons might find that weird or uh, you know obscure or bizarre like why would you prefer this over over, over call of dragons and again the answer is that this is much more simple and it is way more accessible to more players i think that if you are we double rallying a fort right now hello what was that planned or that did that just happen that's crazy anyway what i'm trying to say here is that the gameplay of rise of kingdoms has been extremely successful so far more successful than call of dragons that's the data the game is just more popular call of dragons has had over a year now to sort of figure out what it is and what it wants to be and regardless all they've ended up doing is adding a lot of features from rise of kingdoms right like that's kind of the development of call of dragons has been like adding home kingdom adding 
auto casting of artifacts adding like all the stuff that kind of makes the game a little bit more like are okay it's not exactly the same right the, the fighting is still different but i think the accessibility of the combat the ease of understanding the combat in rise of kingdoms is part of why rise of kingdoms is so successful even though there's a lot to be desired for many players from the call of dragons combat style i personally just prefer the simple gameplay style of rise of kingdoms it works it's worked for years now i just played kvk for three days straight king's land just ended and i'll make a video about the results of my kvk in a couple of days we did end up winning by the way which is great but i played kvk for three days i had a blast we had a ton of fun i love the combat in rise of kingdoms i don't think it needs to change right and for those players that want a more in-depth combat experience great news call of dragons is better now than it's ever been according to players that have been playing it they've been improving the game for over a year and if you want that style of combat there's already a game that has it and it's call of dragons so for me i don't want to see rise of kingdoms become call of dragons i don't want to see a you know us go farther and farther down the ranged path i'm personally not interested like at all at all one of the reasons why i haven't invested in engineering commanders even though players are getting great reports with them is because i actually just hate the idea of ranged combat and rise of kingdoms just period like i think it sucks i think that it's kind of boring you just sit in the back and it just attacks things i understand that like there's a strategic advantage there because you can sort of use it to control the map and choke points and things like that i get it right i get i get the appeal to it um and to an extent it's fine right i i, I might eventually you know invest in ranged commanders but for me personally i would much rather see rise of kingdoms continue to use its it's already successful combat style and just keep that as it is but it also goes deeper than that right it's not just about the possibility of changing the core gameplay and it's not just about the possibility of them changing the actual like lore and era of the entire game right I think that that would be I'm just also not interested in that right like I like the feudal age I like medieval fighting I like medieval combat it's been successful for rise of kingdoms for years now I think we should keep that right I'm not interested in the gunpowder era I'm not interested in the industrial revolution I'm not interested in the renaissance or whatever like I like the current era but beyond that right the implications of adding a new tier of unit from a macro level like if we zoom out right we zoom out of the game if we look at this from a macro level I think what this does is something very important that I really don't want to see the developers do and mess up okay and what that is is a fundamental moving of the goalposts if we add a new tier of unit and a new era what actually ends up happening is you end up moving the goalpost for actual end game combat and end game fighting right right now I as a player of six years am at the end game and for me the symbolic reaching of end game is unlocking tier five units right unlocking tier five units means that you are in the end game and I know that there's a little bit of a gray area there because like technically like season of conquest is kind of end game right but the fact that I can't scroll past here means that this is the end and the fact that you can only get here once you've gotten your city hall to 25 and your academy to 25 and all the other relevant buildings that means that tier five is kind of the end of the progress of your own city right this is symbolically the pillar that represents end game okay and this is a super important milestone for players and i would say that 95 or 98 percent of all of my best experiences memories and fun that i've had in rise of kingdoms has happened after reaching that milestone right reaching tier five end game meant to me that i could now do whatever i want instead of focusing on technology and instead of focusing on upgrading buildings i can now focus on investing in commanders and investing in you know equipment and armaments and things like that now of course it's important to like work on that before as well right and arguably even more so especially like vip level and things like that but my point is that symbolically tier five meant that you were done you are now in the end game and you can work on whatever you want and if the developers add a new tier of unit that comes after tier five they're fundamentally moving end game so for me as a player who's played for six years i've put five figures into the game if i wake up one day and there's a new tier of unit in the game then i've actually lost something as a player i've lost my status of being in the end game a status that i've held for like five years at that point i now have to work for again and that goal post being moved to me is very detrimental to the goodwill of the player because the actual achieving of end game is probably the most fundamental and important milestone in the entire game again that's where 98 percent of my fun and enjoyment for the game has come from and so if we have this most sort of sacred pillar of the game's progression and we move that goalpost 
Well, what that tells me as a player is that there is literally no investment in the game that I have made that is safe. If they can move something as fundamental as literal end game from me after six years, well, then there's no cap to what they could change. They could add a sixth skill to all of your commanders. They could raise the level of commanders from 60 to 80 or a hundred. They could add equipment beyond legendary and it can be mythic equipment, right? If they move something as simple and as important as the literal achievement of being in the end game than every other system in the entire game they've opened Pandora's box there is nothing sacred in terms of progression if they go down this path because the implication of a new tier unit or let's say t6 implies that down the line they could add a tier 7 or a tier 8 okay and I know that I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself right but what I'm trying to explain is the philosophy that the player will understand from the developers in that nothing is safe nothing is sacred none of your progress actually matters because it may never end no matter what system it is right and I think that that's what I've loved so much about being an end game is that I'm City Hall 25 I have tier 5 units I'm done with those systems I don't have to think about them again okay and if we add a new era or age and we add a new tier of units well now my most core concrete and foundational progress has been ripped out from under me right the floor is ripped out from beneath that end game player and now they have to reach end game again and I understand that they've discussed you know giving players tier five automatically when they reach kvk4 and I think that that's probably a good thing like actually speeding up the the early game and getting players into that end game I think that's very important because like I said that's where all the fun is for me at least anyway but that doesn't solve the problem of cracking the player psychology of like not knowing what systems they're going to mess with next right if I can't even have faith in the actual progress of my city and tech then I can't have faith in any system in the game moving forward ever and I think that really hurts the goodwill of the player these systems that we've had set in stone for six years have now been shattered wide open and I think a lot of players are not going to like that me included and historically right if we look at the differences between tier one two three four and five there's literally no functional difference between these tiers besides the stats that they bring right like there's no fundamental difference between tier one versus tier two the only difference is bigger numbers right and with bigger numbers comes higher damage but it also comes a higher training cost a higher healing cost and a longer training time which means more speed ups right and so you know I know that this new sort of era and age or tier of units isn't going to necessarily be a tier six infantry and so maybe it doesn't have higher stats maybe the stats are similar or maybe the stats are lower but it attacks at range freely something like that even still from a resource management perspective having to manage another type of unit and whatever that comes with in terms of you know gold cost and things like that healing cost and whatever I already struggle and again you can look at my uh, my resources here and you can look at the uh, this is this is actually a good kbk I actually ended this KBK kvk with a lot of resources compared to previous kvks okay but even still like my account is pretty much drained here all right and if we talk about adding a whole new unit or a whole new tier of units what does that mean for the cost for the player in terms of resources and also what do we actually get from that right maybe we get a change in the gameplay which again is a change that i personally don't even want but even if we do it just adds a whole new layer of things that we have to worry about and prepare progress through and accumulate over time and that's just not something that I am interested in at all especially if they have higher stats if they have higher stats this entire system needs to be thrown in the garbage like absolutely like no question if you have a unit that's stronger than this like no shot absolutely not like that is definitely a line in the sand for me that I think would just be well I mean that's what these players are anticipating right and that's why 80 percent of players are not interested in that because they think of tier six and they think of a higher Higher tier unit with more stats and they just don't want that right and so I think that that is pretty self-explanatory but if this new tier or age of unit brings along higher stats I'm absolutely am not interested in that at all right and I already wasn't interested to begin with but don't don't add a new like don't add a new tier with higher stats that would be absurd like that would be awful now just to circle back to what I discussed at the beginning of the video I mentioned that like you know if they did add a new tier of unit if it was more historically significant and it was you know specific to different civilizations and things like that I think that there is something interesting there like maybe but to 
me, I'm not interested in it as a new tier of unit. What I would rather see the developers do is what they've done with the shifting sands KVK implement this as part of maybe crystal technology, right? Maybe you can make a specific season or, or story of KVK that includes a new, you know, tier or type of units and you can add it there right and then if players don't like that style of gameplay they don't want to do that then they can just avoid that kvk right but if they do like that and they do want that in the game then they can go for it and i think that that is probably the safer way to go about this because again like for me there's really nothing about any of what we've talked about that i am particularly interested in right i'm not interested in a new era i'm not interested in the expansion of ranged combat i'm not interested in a unit with higher stats i'm not interested in managing a fourth unit that or a fifth unit really that will cost more of my resources and healing and things like that so i'm not interested in any of that but if players are then put it in a kvk game mode and let them queue up for it right and what the developers will find then is if that kvk is super popular right like if players really love that well then maybe you can come back and re rethink about it and be like okay well maybe we actually add this to the base game but to consider adding it to the base game right off the rip i think would be a huge misstep i think it would be a very big mistake uh, to do this without like actually consulting the players and seeing what they think because personally that is not something that I am interested in really at all. Maybe they could test the waters by adding, you know, a second type of expedition that focuses on ranged combat and maybe sort of trickle it into that expedition and see how players like it there. Um, or maybe they could do it in the form of like a champions of Olympia or something like Ark of Osiris, something like that, where they add in, you know, a new event, like an actual new event that, you know, introduces this new era to the player base, but to add it to the actual core game to me would be a big mistake and again it's not just because i don't want it like it's not just because i don't like the idea of it but it's because like i mentioned before it fundamentally moves end game and i as an end game player will actually lose what i've already worked for which was the achievement of reaching end game right and the implications of that are that no system is safe moving forward and the goodwill that is built up with the player base is kind of shattered right i now have to worry about every other system in the entire game getting this you know moving of the goalposts which they've already done by the way they've already added like the iconic tier system to equipment right they've already sort of done this but to do it to such a fundamental system i think would be a massive mistake and like look i kind of understand where the developers are coming from they're kind of in this weird position right where when you think about the end game high top tier player right a lot of them are running out of things to acquire a lot of them already have a special talent on a lot of their gear they have iconic tier five for all the most important pieces and they are getting their hands on some really good armaments with good inscriptions and so for that end game top tier player the developers need to release something new new content for them to acquire right I mean let's just be real those players keep the lights on those are paying customers for the game that allow this game to be free to play for everybody else they they just spend so much money that the game would not exist without those players and so it's the job of the developer to implement new things that they can get their hands on new things that they can experience and play with and feel like you know and have fun and have fun with right like it's a game at the end of the day right like they want to have fun and so the developers are, are in this weird position where it's like they have to add something new at some point eventually right and historically in the past they've done this by adding new systems they've added the formation system they've added the equipment system right like I was here before equipment okay I remember that I remember you know they added crystal tech they added the museum system they've added all of these systems to the game and you know I've been very outspoken about this in the past but the problem with new systems is that it increases the gap between the new player and the old player the spending player and the non-spending player but also fundamentally it makes the game harder to understand like there's more things that you have to learn as a new player to get involved in rise of kingdoms for me when i first started playing you just got tier five units and you got commanders and that was it you could fight in the open field then they added equipment then they added crystal tech then they added armaments and and you know now we're getting more and more complicated and the downside of that again is that it's harder for new players to get into the game however if they go the other route and they you know expand on end game which is it sounds like what they're considering right now the downsides of that are again a bigger gap between new and old players which they've addressed already they've said that possibly you just get tier five for hitting kvk4 but the downside of doing that again is that it crushes the goodwill of the player 
and we now no longer can have faith in any progress for any system because if they move something as fundamental as the end game of six years then they can move the goalpost for literally anything else and so the developers are in this really tough spot where it's like what do they add next right like they have to add something but it can't negatively affect the player base right and so do they add another new system or do they expand on the end game and, and like i think that's you know the tough position that they find themselves in and I wish I had the answer to that, but unfortunately I'm not a game developer. I can't see into the future and I don't know what the correct path forward is. But what I can tell you is that the implementation of new tiers of units has already been done before in many games that came before rise of kingdoms. And historically it does not end well for them. Famously, I've talked about this on the channel before, but in game of war fire age, they have a unit called demigods and demigods are tier 53. Okay. And the tier 53 demigod requires that your stronghold be level 1101 and 1 million demigod units is enough units to kill as much as 1 trillion 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 plus troops in a single hit and so what we know is that in the past this level of power creep literally kills games like it actually kills them that there's no going back once you open that pandora's box and so again i don't know the right path forward but looking at other games that have expanded on the tiers of units that they have in the game they're all dead and i think that that is a huge red flag like it's probably a bad idea to move the end game goalpost because it's never worked before like i can't think of a game in in this genre that's added a new tier unit down the line that is more successful than rise of kingdoms i don't think it exists and i think that that is a big data point that the developers have to look at because i think that it would be a big mistake to move the end game so i don't have the right answer i don't know what the future for rise of kingdoms should be but i feel like it should not be a new tier of units regardless of what that is even if it's not tier six swordsman i still don't think that we should get a fifth type of ranged gunpowder unit i'm not interested in that i would love to know what you guys think would you be interested in expanding the era or age of rise of kingdoms maybe i'm just biased because i've been playing for six years but i like where we are in the game uh i just i'm not interested in more ranged combat or the future of history okay even though i think that there's some cool things that they could do with this in the form of like adding special units and things like that for different civs at the end of the day i'm not that interested in this and I want to know what you guys think in the comments section below while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and it'll get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and maybe they can also provide their feedback for the future of the game consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace